What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jock. This is my E36 uh, 1996 BMW, which I'm converting into a full-on race car. Um, got some awesome plans for it. I'm super stoked. We've been busy with it for a long time. But today we're going to get stuck into a DIY porting job on the cylinder head. Join us on this crazy journey. Let's see where we get to. Valves look really good. Co overall condition of the head is very, very good. So now we mark the valve. Because this is going off to engineering. Even the valve seat, like you don't see significant wear on the valve. There is a little, but not a lot. Considering the mileage of this car, unbelievable. Okay. <laughs> So what we've done is we've taken the valves out and the head is in really good condition so it's, that's a massive win. Um, I see, I've seen everything on this motor is actually still original BMW so the thing had 260 odd thousand on the clock and it still was all original components so the alternator, all the pulleys, everything was the water pump was even still an original OEM water pump so it's actually phenomenal that it made it this far with all the original components so what we're going to do now is i'm going to basically get stuck into the porting of the cylinder head okay so the reason i'm porting this doing a diy port job on this is just to try and clean things up a bit in terms of the the intake ports I'm going to, I'm not going to do anything on the exhaust ports today, there's something I want to discuss with a specialist before I get stuck into that, so all we're going to do is the uh, intake ports. Now there's a lot of theory behind the intake ports and a lot of misconception. Um, this is based on the size of the port as well as the finish of the port. So I'm not going to talk too much about that, but in theory, we're not running super wild cams in this car. We're also not boosting the car, in other words, with a turbo or a supercharger. If you increase the flow volume by such a significant amount, then the port can become a restriction or a bottleneck. But in this case, these ports are so good from the factory. Um, if you try and remove too much material, you're going to end up um, changing the power curve and changing the flow characteristics and you'll lose power and torque because if you open it up you're inevitably going to allow the car to um, breathe better but only at higher rpm and with the cams we're going to run in this car they're essentially um, just a bit more wild than the E36 M3 spec cams because I still want to run the stock valve train and this is an endurance car for, built for reliability because of that we're not going to see massive flow numbers and therefore there's no value in trying to open the port too much or in any any larger size than it is in stock form because you're just going to lose your mid-range torque and ultimately that's what we want we want very good mid-range and we're not going to be revving the guts out of it because it also is going to have the standard conrods and the standard pistons so if we were building a super wild monster show sure, we could open the ports up a little bit but again the ports are so good you're not really going to gain from it it's not the limiting factor in the whole system and um, BMW has done such a great job with these ports but there are a couple of things we're going to do so just come have a look here so if you can see there's a bit of a step down inside the port there and that's consistent on all of the ports so I'm going to smooth that out that's one of the things I'm going to do so it's so difficult to see but down here there's a bit of a uh, step as well so we're just going to remove these steps here's a good view of that step 
that's a solid stop. So we're going to remove all of these uh, little bumps and that. It's not going to do much, it's just going to help the flow characteristics. Then we will talk about finishes in a little bit, but uh, you can see also these rough casting marks over here. I'm going to try and avoid doing anything to this, the valve guide. I don't want to damage the valve guide. Um, they might be replaced, but they might not. And then if you look right down through the port, you'll see that, that uh, edge there. I'm just going to sharpen that up a bit. On the surface where it changes texture, we're just going to smooth that out a bit. But for the rest, we're not going to change the characteristics of this port too much. It is such a good port. We'll end up messing it up. So, let's get stuck into it. Okay, so it looks like this bit with, on the air grinder is taking off too much material. So it's working, I've got the step away, but I'm just concerned it's taking off too much material. So I'm going to switch to a Dremel type machine, electric, with this bit. Let's see. I'm using the carbide bit on the air grinder to take away the majority of the material. And then I'll come up with a paper wheel and just uh, get the finish that I want. In these, so this is cylinder three and uh, five and six, um, there is a step on both, both intake valves. So a bit more work to be done, but really, really not a lot of work. Again, like I said, the, the exhaust valves I'm not going to do. I'm going to speak to a specialist about that. I might have that done. The head needs to still go off for engineering, and we're going to do a special cut on the valve seat. So, um, obviously, I'm doing this before we cut the valve seat, so that uh, if if I had done this after, I could potentially damage the face of the valve seat. Okay, so I'm gonna, I've changed to a very small bit and I need to try and get into this tight little area here to smooth up a sharp area. But once I'm done with this, we can go in with the sanding, sanding bit and just uh, get the finish. So we're almost there. Alright, so what we've done is I've, I've removed all those, uh, those big steps, those ridges on the intake valves. Now we're going to switch it over and do the, do, the, do the front end, the top end of the intake port. Let's see. So that was a lot of work, it's a new day now, so we're going to continue with just trying to progress with this build. So where are we? What I've done is I've sent a lot of, I've sent the block, I've sent the head as an assembly off to the machine shop and we've, um, we've put all of the components in the sonic bath and just chemically cleaned them. Um, I did that before I got stuck into doing the DIY porting on the head. And so the block we also, on the block I did a very light hone at the machine shop. The block is an interesting one, it's a Nickasol block. So there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of scoring on the block, the block looked pretty good. Um, so we just gave it a good clean, got all that varnish in terms of the oil staying off. And it's, it's cleaned up really nice. So from here, the cylinder head is going off to uh, another guy I use. We're going to get the camshafts done. The camshafts are going to be similar to E36 M3 spec cams, but a little bit more aggressive. And then we're going to do special valve cuts on the valve seats. If you look at the individual valves, 
the wear on the seat is not significant. This head is worn uh, really well. It's, with the mileage it has, it's actually in phenomenal condition. So it's going off. We're going to do cuts on the valve seats, um, clean up the valves, do the, uh, the cams, reprofile the cams, get the clearances all set so that the cylinder head is ready to go. Um, from there, we're going to take the block with the pistons and the crank and we're going to do compression checks. And then what we're going to do is just make sure all the clearances are correct so that it is ready and the compression is correct so we can run pump gas. I don't really want to run any sort of funny fuels um, because ultimately this car is all about reliability. From there, there's a lot of small components we need to clean up. I've got to rebuild the Vanos. Um, I need to order a lot of parts. So a lot of work ahead, but uh, we're making good progress. At least now the head can go. So we'll get to cleaning those bits. All right, so the cylinder head has come back from the engineering shop. Um, what, what we've done is we ground the cams. We've given it a 264 degree camshaft. So basically it's quite a bit, doesn't sound excessive, but it's actually quite a bit um, bigger in terms of uh, duration. Come here to the stock cam and we've done some work on the valves and the valve seat. But uh, let's just have a look. The, the head looks really nice. Um, the guys have done a great job, but uh, the proof will be in the pudding once we put it in to the engine. It's the first time I've used these guys. They're different to the other guys I've used, but I reckon we need to give everybody a fair chance and just see what the quality is like. So, um, they've come recommended. What we also have done is we've just given the, the head a light skim. Um, the reason for that is uh, just to make sure that there's no um, unevenness on the head and also it, it gives it a nice fresh surface so let's have a look so overall the head seems to have cleaned up really nice it's all um, wrapped in this cellophane plastic it's cylinder number four and five the valves are sticking out obviously yeah on the face of it over here it all looks good So I'm not sure if you can see, but there is a swirl pattern on the valves. So we've also applied a swirl pattern to the valve. We've also done some valve seats. So the idea with this is uh, it's going to be a reliability build. We're not making a thousand horsepower. It's not a super 11,000 RPM enabled. It's really about reliability. So with the swirls and the swirl cuts on the valves and that, I haven't tested that back to back, but apparently it's quite common on race engines. So we'll, we'll give it a shot, see, see how it performs. Quite excited. But ultimately, we need to get uh, a move on with this build. Uh, there's a lot to do. Um, one more thing, you'll see that I have put the cylinder head down on two pieces of wood here, okay? And the reason for that is the cams are installed in the cylinder head and you can see the valves protruding there. If you just got put the cylinder head flat on its face, 10 to 1 what's going to happen is it's going to bend those valves and this thing's just been done. And I've seen that before, the guys um, are not happy with the cylinder head, they take it back to the shop, they put it down on the counter to complain and they just go and bend all of the valves. All of the valves that are open so make sure you don't do that that's going to be a wrap for this episode thank you so much so much to do we're going to get busy in the next one we'll see you then cheers